The Chinese Communist Party's Fujian, touted as the world's largest and most advanced conventional power aircraft carrier, has drawn significant attention on the international stage. Not only do American experts believe that Fujian needs to be targeted, but the international netizens also offer strategies to attack it, emphasizing the need for the United States to confront the CCP backing it. Retired U.S. Navy Colonel Carl Schuster, a former director of operations at the United States Pacific Command, considers such a massive carrier a prime target for enemies in any future conflict. On Quora, users candidly discuss how long would it take to sink China's new aircraft carrier in a war. They believe that once China's new 003 aircraft carrier leaves the air defense range of the Chinese mainland, it will lose its combat effectiveness and become vulnerable to sinking. These are photos of the 003 aircraft carrier. Considering that during the Gulf War, the average flight time of US fighters jet did not exceed 40 minutes. The 003 aircraft carrier must efficiently launch and recover its aircraft to compete with the US military. Catapult test. Recent catapult tests suggest that the launch distance of the 003 aircraft carrier is around 100 meters, shorter than the 200 to 300 meters achieved by the US Navy's Ford class aircraft carrier in 2015. This implies that the 003's Catapult may not have sufficient energy to launch some heavy or fully loaded aircraft, posing greater takeoff challenges for pilots. Fuel management during landing is also tricky. Excess fuel not only puts immense pressure on the aircraft's landing gear, but also increases the stress on the carrier's arresting of wires. Pilots may need to jettison some fuel in emergencies to ensure a safe landing. If aircraft can't land promptly after fuel dumping and need to wait in the air, aerial refueling becomes necessary. So far, aerial refueling remains a weak point for the PLA, risking aircraft crashes due to fuel depletion. Without addressing this, the 003 aircraft carrier could be the first worldwide in accident rates during aircraft landings. It could also possibly deter frequent flight operations, thus questioning the carrier's compact effectiveness. In the waters east of Taiwan, the 003 aircraft carrier's limited search and rescue capabilities could lead to pilot fatalities in accidents, further diminishing the appeal of becoming a naval aviator. The CCP might not have to lower recruitment standards, potentially increasing the frequency of plight accidents and forcing the Navy to replace lost aircraft more often. The Fujian is powered by three diesel engines and two diesel generators for its electromagnetic catapults, consuming significant fuel. Of its 80,000 tonne displacement, 18,000 tonnes are diesel, requiring constant support from the Type 901 comprehensive supply ship. However, with only two such supply ships capable of over 25 knots, can they keep up with the 003 aircraft carrier in the waters east of Taiwan? This satellite image from April 25, 2021 shows the Type 901 supply ship struggling with insufficient speed, getting outpaced by a US Arleigh Burke class destroyer. The Type 901, positioned at number 3, follows the Liaoning carrier at number 1 and the Type 054A Frigate at number 2, yet is repeatedly overtaken by the US destroyer at position 6. Why does this situation arise? It turns out that the 50,000 tonne Type 901 supply ship powered by four diesel engines falls far short of its claimed speed of 25 knots. The US military would undoubtedly formulate tactics to exploit this weakness. In real combat, cutting off the oil supply to the 003 aircraft carrier could render the Fujian a maritime coffin. Even minor attacks in the battle could inflict serious damage on an aircraft carrier. How quickly and effectively a Navy can respond and control the situation is a crucial measure of its strength. Incidents like the fires on the US Navy's USS Forestral and USS Enterprise and the HMS Illustrious of the Royal Navy, which maintain operation despite multiple attacks, showcase Western's Navy's superior damage control capabilities. We have yet to see any comparable instances from the Chinese Navy. Furthermore, the physical fitness of Chinese naval personnel is a significant factor in damage control. 
Reports suggest that after three years of service, Chinese naval personnel may only withstand two-thirds of the impact force that American military personnel can endure. This means that tasks managed by Western naval personnel may require more time and resources for the Chinese Navy. In the waters east of Taiwan, the PLA's 003 aircraft carriers, lacking air superiority from land-based aircraft, face threats from U.S. carrier groups and bombers flying from bases in Japan and the Philippines. U.S. bombers and Super Hornets can deploy harpoons or long-range anti-ship missiles LRASM against the 003 aircraft carrier. The 003 aircraft carrier conventional power limits its endurance and speed, making it unable to evade missile attacks. Submarine threats are even more lethal for the 003 aircraft carrier. The U.S. MK-48 torpedoes, known for their high-speed, powerful explosions and precise guidance system, can effectively track and hit dynamic targets like the 003 aircraft carrier. Once locked on by a MK-48, the 003 has almost no chance of escaping. Therefore, anti-submarine warfare is crucial for carrier protection, but this is the plan's biggest problem. The plan has insufficient numbers of dedicated anti-submarine aircraft and shipborne anti-submarine helicopters, not to mention anti-submarine warfare requires extensive experience and strategic thinking, areas where the plan has yet to demonstrate maturity and effectiveness comparable to Western navies. Hence, the survivability of the 003 aircraft carrier is a significant concern. Without neutralizing U.S. submarines, the Fujian is almost certain to be detected. Even if the Fujian's aircraft are ready, there might be no one to pilot them. High-risk flight mission and frequent accidents make many promising young individuals cautious about joining naval aviation. To operate about 120 aircraft, at least 200 skilled pilots are needed. However, this target seems unattainable under current circumstances. To alleviate the shortage, the CCP has even started recruiting women and civilian personnel to expand the pilot pool. As the world's largest conventional power carrier, the Fujian's combat cap capabilities cannot compare even to the world's second largest, the HMS Queen Elizabeth. First, the Fujian lacks sufficient aircraft numbers. The Queen Elizabeth, with a 6.5 tonne displacement, can carry 70 aircraft, while the 8 tonne Fujian can only accommodate 50. Second, the Chinese Navy lacks the courage of the Royal Navy. The HMS Queen Elizabeth, commissioned in 2017, boldly led an international carrier strike group over 10,000 nautical miles to East Asia for military exercise despite power failures during sea trials. Forty years ago, the British even sent two Invincible-class light carriers to fight in Argentina, thousands of miles away. These bold and visionary operations with conventional power carriers are unparalleled. Whether the Fujian will undertake similar ventures to Hawaiian waters remain unknown. However, the Chinese Navy's first two carriers seem far from ready for such bold actions. This conservative approach starkly contrasts with the Royal Navy's adventurous spirit, casting doubt on whether the Fujian can truly compete with Western navies. Economically, Xi Jinping's continuous investment in aircraft carriers, amphibious assault ships and missile destroyers is draining substantial national financial resources. Meanwhile, Western sanctions are presenting unprecedented challenges to China's economy. To balance this contradiction, Xi is actively courting the US, understanding that worsening US-China relations could lead to global investment and trade hesitation towards China. These external funds are crucial for financing China's military expansion. In talks with Biden, Xi Jinping denied plans to attack Taiwan by 2027 or 2035, which is a strategic feint to buy time for military preparations. If there is no intention to attack Taiwan, why is the CCP mass producing warships? Domestically, Xi Jinping's focus is on boosting the PLA's combat confidence and ensuring the military's absolute loyalty to him. After completing military reforms in 2017 and advancing weapons development, launching ships as easily as dumplings, there are still gaps in the PLA's technology, tactics and combat confidence. Some general hold reservations or even oppose Xi's reform and Taiwan's combat plans. Xi is actively reorganizing the military, purging those who oppose or show reluctance to fight to ensure complete obedience. 
Generals disagreeing with Xi's views or strategies are accused of corruption, demoted or even imprisoned. This internal purge is expected to be completed within a year or two, after which Xi might make his move to Taiwan. Why is the CCP so fixated on Taiwan? The answer lies in its strategic location. China's nuclear submarines are confined to Sanya and Qingdao bases, making Taiwan's deep water ports on the east particularly attractive for direct deep sea access, breaking through the first island chain, threatening the second, and reaching the third near Hawaii. The CCP's minimum goal is to divide the Pacific with the US, using Hawaii as a boundary. In this strategic layout, Japan and Southeast Asian countries have strengthened alliances to limit China's military expansion and confine it within the first island chain. Xi's recent visit to Vietnam, a diplomatic strategy to win over Vietnam, was unsuccessful. The CCP is also planning to cooperate with India to carve a path, but it's uncertain if India wants such collaboration. On the other side, US President Biden believes that confronting China does not require warfare, but three sanctioned strategies. First, technological decoupling, not just in chips, but leading to a collapse in all CCP communication devices. Planes grounded, satellites falling, trains derailing, the recent subway derailment in Changping might be due to outdated chips. Secondly, financial decoupling was accelerated by Xi's policies in Hong Kong. Finally, seizing overseas assets of CCP elites and repatriated retired officials and their families. Biden is confident because Western countries generally disapprove of the CCP. Though they've profited from the CCP over the years, they don't support its political ideology, viewing the CCP as rubbish and she as a dictator. Thus, opposing the CCP is seen as a righteous act in the US and the West, garnering widespread support. Biden's economic sanction strategy is based on a core belief. The CCP ultimately cannot overcome the power of money. Western countries hold global financial power, which the CCP's survival and development rely on. Biden's sanctions aim to cut off the CCP's economic lifeline to contain its influence. This strategy echoes historical precedents. Quantitative economic studies show that the fall of the late Qing dynasty was due not only to internal corruption and the feudal system, but also to Empress Dowager Cixi's choice to antagonize foreign powers. This provides a crucial historical lesson for contemporary China's government. Policies can be enforced domestically, but antagonizing the West internationally could destabilize the regime. So when the US military criticizes China's outdated aircraft carrier technology and Biden claims he can subdue the CCP without firing a shot, it reflects not just a strategic assessment, but a deeper political reality. Xi's construction of massive carriers like the Fujian is undoubtedly challenging U.S. global strategic status, provoking concern and countermeasures from the U.S. and its allies. Economic sanctions and technological decoupling following weakening China's economic strength and technological development. This could lead the CCP to lack funds to maintain expensive military equipment and lack personnel to operate carrier aircraft. Therefore, the CCP's extensive military buildup leading to escalated conflict with the US could bring the regime into a perilous state. It can be said that the moment the CCP and the US clash is the day the Chinese people revolt.